underneath the sound of my voice today. There's a lot of things that goes on in your life, and, and fortunate or unfortunate, your pastor and your pastor's wife and family, we, 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 we experience a little bit of that with you. Our hearts are burdened. And so in that fact, it, it's sometimes it's a, it's a burdensome thing. Because I, I know a little bit, maybe, of, of things you go through. But I'm always reminded, Christ won it all. Christ won it all. And so that drives me on. I guess that's that speedboat part, right? Is to, is to just know that even in the midst of the valleys and the hardship that we have, and I know all of us have them, we are victorious in Christ Jesus. Man, that's what, that's what pushes us on. Thank you all so much for worshiping today. You never know when Brother Jim Worthing's just going to show up. Amen. And I, uh, uh, fresh off the boat from Tokyo, right? Or no, where were you? Hong Kong. I know it's one of them. It's a long way from ASEAN. I'll just put it that way. Thank you for being here, brother. That's, uh, you know, we had a choir last week, but I'm telling you, the director this week did far better job than last week. I can... I can tell you, man, I, I, appreciate, I appreciate that. There's more where that came from. Thank you to the choir. I, I love to listen. We have a choir, First Baptist Church of Aussie, and I love that. People walking in second week going, what, 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 what just happened? What, what, where did, what, what just, we have a choir at First Baptist Church of Aussie, and amen. amen. Man, what a joy, and I'm, I'm grateful. You're going to hear more of that. Joel, i got a lot to say in a short time to say it in, all right? So y'all hang on. I've got throttle up today. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I got to let me take a drink and a breath, right? So I can get ready for that. Joel chapter number one. Don't drown. I'm going to swim in it today, Jim. When I began to prepare this message, I had no idea what was going to happen in Israel over the last couple of days. And if you look and you, you don't know what I'm talking about, I would encourage you to look. I would encourage you to, to study what's going on. I stand here today to tell you that the Word of God is being fulfilled before our very eyes. There is a battle that, that, it's not a battle, there is a war that is raging in Israel today. And we can call it whatever we want, and I, and I, and I realize it's going over the airwaves, so I, I'm, I'm okay with that. We can call it Hamas, we can call it... Uh, extreme Muslim, we can call it whatever we want to, but let me tell you what it is. It is the fulfillment of the Word of God right in front of us, and it is a hatred of this man called Jesus Christ. And I'm glad to be a part of a church who will stand boldly and let the world know Jesus is the only way and the only truth and the only hope that this world ever has. As all of this began to transpire, I began to look at my notes. And probably pretty often my wife will wake up in the middle of the night and go, what, what, what are you doing? <laughs> and my response is, the Lord laid this on my heart. I've got to, I've got to get this down. And I, I'm grateful today for pen and paper, but I'm also grateful for technology like I, I'm, I'm sitting there typing on my phone and so today I, 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 it's amazing what the Lord laid on my heart for even this service about a week and a half ago Tuesday a week ago but little did I know what would actually transpire in the last couple of days in, in the nation of Israel Joel Joel was reminding the people what was he doing he was reminding the people of Israel Man, there, there, there is a mess. You're in the midst of a mess, and, and, and not only are you in the midst of a mess, but unfortunately, it's going to get worse. He's reminding them and, and hoping, hoping to open their eyes. I believe a couple things. One, to remind the, the nation of Israel that there is only but one true God, and, and you must have your eyes fixed and focused on that one true God. And let me tell you today, that message is good not just for the nation of Israel, but boy, that is a good message and lesson for the men, women, boys, and girls that sit underneath the sound of my voice 
here in Aussie and Indiana today. Here's what I want you to, right out of the gate, preacher, you're going to get right out, right out of the gate. Let me tell you, King Jesus is, all of the signs are lining up for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if we are not ready for that moment to meet the Lord Jesus Christ, you do not need to leave this room this morning without getting right with the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's just get right to the punchline. Give an invitation, right? The reality is that's, that's, that's the text. And that's, he reminded us, I believe as well, as the church. As he's looking at the nation of, of Israel and the, 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 the chosen of God, the children of God, he's looking at them and what is he reminding them of? I, I believe a message that is relevant for the church today and we'll talk about probably some pretty tough things but there were some issues that were going on and he was reminding the church, hey, you have forgotten the big picture. You have forgotten the purpose. Keep your eyes upon Jesus. All throughout the book of, of Joel, the, the three chapters that are there, he is reminding them, hey church, hey child of God, your eyes are on this and this and this and this. And, and we'll, we'll, we'll kind of talk about some of those real quickly. But here's what I would say to you. The message for First Baptist Church of Ossian, as I believe that we have revival a week from today, as we begin to look forward to that, but the reality of the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, I am here to tell you that we cannot get lost in the pettiness that Satan would put in front of our eyes. We must stay focused upon the main thing and that is that people need a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that's what Joel was reminding the nation of Israel. Look in chapter number 1 and beginning in verse number 14. We're going to be all over today but listen to what it says. It says, Sanctify ye a fast. Call a solemn assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land and the house of the Lord your God and cry unto the Lord, alas, for the, uh, for the day. Uh, for the day of the Lord is at hand and as the destruction of the, of the Almighty shall, shall it come. Is not the meat cut off before our eyes? Yea, joy and gladness from the house of our God. Listen to verse 17. The seed is rotten under their clods. The garners are laid desolate. The barns are broken down, for the corn is withered. Let's pray. Father, today in this hour, I pray you would open our, out, our eyes, God. And Father, that you would pour out your, your, your presence here in a powerful way this morning. Father, as we look at the the surroundings of the nation in which we live and the hatred for those that preach and teach and live for this man called Jesus Christ and it continues to grow. Father, my prayer today is that you would awaken us, God, out of our sleep. Father, that we would be uh, our eyes wide open and that, Father, we would understand the urgency of the hour. And, Father, if it, if it happens there, and that infiltration that is happening there, God, we know that it even happens among our nation walls as well. Father, I pray right now that you would help us. Lord, it doesn't matter what the church to the east, the west, the north, the south, God, what they are doing, Father. It, it doesn't matter what the child of God behind us or beside of us or in front of us, God. It, it doesn't matter. What matters is what will we do with your word here this morning? Father, I, I pray that you would change us. Help us to apply it, God. Help us to understand the urgency of the hour. Help us to understand that, God, that there's not time to play games. Help us to understand, uh, God, the, the reality of the battle that we are in the midst of, that, Father, that we don't even see all of what goes on around us. But, Father, there is a battle, and that battle is that we would just simply, even as children of God, just be casual, be frozen. Father, be lukewarm. Father, I pray today that, Father, we would not leave in the same state in which we came in these doors. 
Father, I pray you challenge us and change us. Oh, Holy Spirit, if there be one lost and without Jesus that has never placed their faith and their trust in Jesus, I pray that, Father, your Holy Spirit would just urge upon them the urgency of this hour. And, Father, to let them know that, Lord, that today is the day of, of mercy and grace upon their life. And, Lord, we're not promised that we'll even safely leave the parking lot of this building. But, Father, help us to be ready at this moment. Father, I pray, prepare our hearts for the time of invitation. Help us, Father, to leave this place knowing that we are able to say it is well with our soul. Lord, we love you. Go before us, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You see, this sermon again was written before the events were taking place there in the nation of Israel. I think about this, these words and what, what, what was going on as I have studied this book of Joel over and over again, especially even preached it in the midst of revival. That, that passage of scripture as we prepare our hearts for revival, what is it? It is a reminder that around us what that the, the barns are broken down. We have a picture of that. Uh, uh, we, the barns, the, the barns around us. And I, I, have you ever, I grew up around barns. Anybody else? And I, it, it almost breaks my heart to see the barns broken down in our, in our community. But what is it a reminder of? It is a, it is a reminder of what happens when, we, when we're not what we should be doing. Uh, let's talk farming for just a, just a minute. When, when that barn is not, uh, the upkeep is not where it's supposed to be. When it's not being used like it's supposed to be. When and it's not a priority like it's supposed to be. And in the text, it reminds us, and it tells us there in verse number 17, it talks about the, the barns being broken down. It is, a, it is a symbol of probably a multitude of things, but today I wanted to look at it from the perspective of the, the church of a living God. I want us to think about that barn being broken down, the reality, and today I would say to you, in the nation in which we live, and, and it's a sad fact, but the reality is this, that many churches today have become a place, well, let's just gather, let's walk out, let's feel good about ourselves, rather than having a reality check of what God has called us to be about. And how does that happen? How do churches get in that condition? Here's how. It is when I and, and you and I allow our lives to get far from where God would have us to be. The reality is this, that we all suffer from that. And Joel is looking around and he is saying to them, hey, and, and, and you know if you've read that, the fields are burned up. We'll look at that in a minute. Uh, the crop is gone. The barns are down. What, what is it? The, the nation in disarray. And how can it be fixed? Well, he gives us a great answer. Joe gives us a powerful answer. Joe gives us the, uh, the answer that you and I need today. And what is that? We need a mighty move of the hand of God upon our lives. The church cannot fabricate revival. The church cannot buy revival. The church cannot uh, listen, it can't sing a revival. Listen, it is when we yield our way to a holy God, only God brings revival. And it happens in your life as well as it does mine. So what is it? It is a, it is a picture of the restoration of the, of the barn. It's a picture of the restoration of a nation. It is the picture of the restoration of the church as Israel lies in waste. As I read over that again this morning, knowing the events over the last few days, I am reminded of the reality of the time that Israel lies in waste. How did that happen? It was more than just let's wake up and, and, and have an idea that we attack Israel. And I would say to you that it's so much more than just attacking a nation. Hear me. We realize according to the word of God that there is coming a day where King Jesus will come and set foot again upon this earth. And listen, there is a battleground over that holy land that is, is that of an almighty God. And hear me, there is an enemy, the devil himself, and he asked absolutely hates that. And, and, and what is it even more than that? The reality is this, that there is an enemy that hates that, that the reality of who that we are, that we would lift high the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to me. We must be battle ready. I preached about that last week. We've got to understand that it's not let's just tiptoe through the tulips and expect everything to be okay. There is a battle that goes on around us. Yes, in little old Austin. 
Tallahassee in Indiana and Northeast Indiana and America, the world in which we live in. And so what is it? We must be battle ready. He hates what's going on. Yesterday as we had a fall festival, 400 plus easy, it came through our property yesterday. To God be the glory, amen. What a blessing that that is. But you know, on this little card, we had this little thing called the good news caboose, didn't we, brother? AJ, I bypassed him today. I just, but let me tell you, let me tell you, why, why is there a battle going on around us today? Let me tell you why. Because yesterday, oh, it's just a festival. I don't know why you do that. And, I, and I, not that any of our people would ever grumble about that or be jealous or whiny. Preacher, you stop preaching and start meddling. Well, that felt good for a little while, I'll just tell you, just a little bit. Let me tell you why there's a battle. Let me tell you why we exist. Let me tell you why we do what we do. And let me, let me tell you why I kind of turn a deaf ear to maybe the murmuring and the mumbling and the grumbling. Let me tell you why. Because 14 people accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior yesterday on this property. Well, I'm not sure that we need to do it. Let me tell you, I'm not asking your opinion. I'm telling you what the church needs to be about is men, women, boys, and girls coming to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. I'm grateful that it was in the form of the good news caboose, right? There's a reason that I say that because I've been guilty of making the statement, listen, the train is leaving the station. Get on board or get left behind, amen? And I saw the caboose pull out yesterday, amen? Listen to what I'm about to tell you. We have got to be about the gospel and that is that men, women, boys and girls come into the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and we don't have time to wait on those who would whine and whimper and, 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 and cry listen we have got serious business to be about there's a world dying and going to hell and the church sits idly by many times not this one I thank God for that we can't get our eyes fixed. Well, well preacher, I just, I, listen to me. Don't bring that conversation to me, all right? My blood pressure will go through the roof. I just want you to know, right? I'll have a coronary right there. This morning I ask you, did you come expecting change? Did you come desiring change? If not, then listen to what I'm going to say. You need revival. I, we ought to come into the house of the Lord. And I, I'll just be honest, and I do. I come into the house of the Lord and I'm like, Lord, what, what, what are you going to do today, right? What, what's, we, we meet sometimes before the service and I ask that question, hey, what's it going to look like today? And, and here's the beauty of it is this, that at the end of the day, uh, there are times we walk out the door and go, boy, I didn't see that one coming, amen? And I'm okay with that. Are you all okay with that? Some of you are going, oh. I'm scared. No, I'm okay when the Lord shows up. Let me say to you today, America is burning. And unfortunately, the church is carrying the gas. America is burning. Unfortunately, the church, let me say this, not his church, but the church carrying the gas. What do you mean? They're, they're preaching. You know what? I'm, I'm okay. You're okay. You just live your life and it's okay. Listen to what I'm ready to say. God demands holiness from his people. I, you're not going to get that here. I can promise you. You're not going to get that. I'm okay. You're okay. I, I, and I don't, I don't say it. Listen to what everybody say. You're saying, well, man, that's awful mean, preacher. No, listen to me. I thank God that I had parents that told me what was going to hurt me and what was going to harm me and what was sin in my life. Why? Because that I, I could, could, could run from that. Let me tell you what is destroying our nation today and unfortunately many churches, uh, let me tell you what it is. It is that we're not, we're, we're not willing to, 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 to preach truth. We're not willing to say, hey, sin is sin. Run from that. It will destroy you. You can't be unfaithful uh, to God, His house. You can't, you can't live your life your way and expect the hand and the blessing of God upon your life. And yet I know that there are dozens, if not, and let's just be honest, probably thousands in this nation that would say, you know what, just do things your way. Go. And at the end of the day, you know what, the Lord's going to listen to me. There is coming a, a day of reckoning. For all of us, we will stand before the judgment seat of an almighty God. Love is not saying, you'll be okay. 
sermon is not to listen to, but it is to apply to our lives. We need a revival. Let, let me just read something to you and we'll roll on. Author Nancy DeMoss wrote this. And some points says this. When do we need a revival? We need a revival when we do not love him as we once did. We need a revival when earthly interests occupy are more important to us than our internal ones. We need a revival when we would rather watch TV and secular book magazines rather than read the word of God and pray. When we need a revival is when church dinners are better attended than church prayer meetings. We need a revival when concerts uh, draw bigger crowds and prayer meetings. We need a revival when we have little or no desire for prayer. We, we need a revival when we'd rather make money or than to give our money to things of God. We need a revival when our Christianity is joyless and passionless. We need a revival when we know that our truth is uh, the truth in our heads but not willing to practice it with our hands. Well, we need a revival when we, when we make little effort to witness to those that are lost. We need a revival when we have more time for sports, recreation, our jobs, entertainment, but not the Bible study, the house of God and prayer. We need a revival when we do not tremble at the word of God. We need a revival when we seldom think about thoughts of eternity. We need a revival when God's people are more concerned about their jobs, their careers, than about the kingdom of Christ and salvation of a lost and dying world. We need a revival when Christian husbands and wives are not praying together, when Christian families families are not gathering around an altar of prayer. We need a revival when our marriage are coexisting rather than the fullness of the love of Christ. We need a revival when children are growing up and adopting worldly values, secular philosophies and ungodly lifestyles. We need a revival when we are more concerned about our children's education, activity, athletic activities and about the condition of their souls. We need a revival when sin in the church is pushed under the carpet. We need a revival when we, when we know sin is not dealt with through the biblical process and discipline in the house of God. We need a revival when we tolerate little sins such as gossip and, 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 and critical spirit and lack of love in the church of, a, of the living God. We need a revival when we, when we will watch things on television and movies that are not holy. We need a revival when we sing half-hearted and our, our worship is lifeless. We need a revival when our prayers are empty words designed to impress others. We need a revival when we lack fervency. We need a revival when our hearts are cold and our eyes are dry. We need a revival when we're seeing regular evidence. Uh, we're not seeing regular evidence of supernatural power of God. We need a revival when we have ceased to weep and mourn and grieve over the sin and the sin of others in our own life. We need a revival when we are content to live uh, with uh, explainable ordinary Christianity and church services. We need a revival when we have become bored with worship. We need a revival when people have been entertained to, uh, to be drawn to church. We need a revival when we start uh, fitting in and uh, adapting the world rather than coming out and being separate. We need a revival when we don't long for the company and the fellowship of the people of God. We need a revival when we aren't seeing lost people drawn to Jesus. We need a revival when we aren't exercising our faith and believing God for the impossible. We need a revival when we are more concerned about what others think than we are about what God thinks. We need a revival when we are unmoved by the fact that 2.5 billion people in this world have never even heard the name of Jesus Christ. We need a revival when we are unmoved by the thought of our neighbors, our business associates, our acquaintances who are lost and without Jesus we need a revival when the lost world around us does not even know that we care or we even exist. We need a revival when we are making little or no difference in the world around us. We need a revival when, when the fire has gone out of our hearts and our marriages and our church and oh we need a revival when we are blind to the extent of our need and don't even think that we need revival anymore. I'm here today to tell you oh Oh, Lord, we need a revival today. Oh, we need a revival. Joel. Joel 9. Joel 1, 9 through 14. The, we got a dried up mess. Look what it says. Meat offerings, drink offerings, cut off from the house of the Lord. Priest the Lord ministers to mourn. The field is wasted. The land mourneth. The corn is wasted. The new wine is dried up. Off the uh, and, and off the oil and languished. Be ye ashamed, O husband! How we vine dresser the wheat and barley, because the harvest of the field is perished. The vine is dried up. The fig tree languishes. The pomegranate tree, the palm tree, and the apple tree, even the tree of the field, withered because the joy is withered away from the sons of men. Gird yourselves and lamb, and ye priests, how ministers of the altar come 
lie all night in sackcloth, you ministers of God, and meat offerings and the drink offerings withheld from the house of your God. Sanctify yourself. Sanctify your fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the elders, all the inhabitants of the land, into the house of the Lord your God, and cry unto the Lord. Boy, if that does not give us a picture of America today, we are blind. If that does not give us a picture of Israel today, we are blind. We are spiritually blind, physically blind, mentally blind. What does it remind us of? It's time for a change. Something's got to happen. There's got to come a point in all of our lives where we have got to come to the point of realization something has got to change. What I'm doing, it ain't working. It amazes me how many that choose their way and their plan and their purpose and they go about their plan, their purpose and and, and in all reality if they would have a reality check in their own life they would have to say my way is not working. We have all come to that point in our life if we've ever come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ we have got to come to that point of realization My way does not work. So it's a time for a change. It's a shifted focus in our life. As we look at enemy infiltration, what happens, I I venture to say that it's not just that they cross borders or that they go into cities. It is not that it is that way, but let me tell you how the enemy infiltrates into your life. Subtly. Slowly. Patiently by what you ingest mentally and spiritually and emotionally and through your eyes and through your ears. God has called us separate. Be set apart. Sanctified. God has not called us to be selfish. The signs of selfishness that was going on in the nation of Israel and honestly, maybe today, What's going on in the life of churches and children of God today? Selfishness. It's become about them. It's become about my comfort and what what makes it easy for me. I thank God we had, I don't know, 60 some that were out serving yesterday. Thanks be unto God. What a blessing. We took a picture and, and, and man, what a joy that it was. And I thank God for their selflessness. I know we've got those who've got other things that are going on, but I thank God. And I, as I watch and we look towards this time of revival, I, I pray that we see selflessness in that time as well. We'll be in the house of God. Preacher, but sometimes I get this and that. I, 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 I went home and took three a leave last night. Amen. I mean, that's just the way it was. I... I limped in the door, and I limped, I limped out of the door last night, and guess what? I limped back in the door this morning. I, I, I'm, I'm stiff this morning. Amen, anybody else? You'll get old one of these days too then, all right? I just want you to know. It, 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 boy, I can't wait to stand on my feet all day long. No, not at all. I know I don't have long legs, but they hurt sometimes. Amen, I, I, what, what, what is it about? It's God over me. Revival will never come in our lives when it's me over God. And let me tell you today, it is not, it is not my words. I can tell you all day long, it is God over me. It's God over me. But let me tell you the, 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 the reality of the billboard of our life. Let me tell you what it is. Our actions will tell us what our heart is all about. It is about, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to serve the Lord today. What is it? And I don't have time. You're all going to just have to, have to listen. And there's a sermon in all of it. But the signs of selfishness is this. Yeah, it's that murmuring, right? Let me, let me just complain about this and that. And I, I just can't this and that. Listen, it is, it, it is a reminder of what Revelation says. It, it is that we have left our first love. Preacher, that's, that's, that's pretty harsh words. No, it's biblical words. When other things become more important than God's things, I have left my first love. 
It is the reality that I, that I, that I, hey, I cherish me and my plans and my purpose and my prerogative more than I do his. Preacher, that's hard to swallow. Let me tell you where we can get it right. At the foot of the cross of Jesus Christ. You see, the same thing happened with the Israelites and Moses. I believe Exodus 17, it talks to us about he looked around and they were about to kill him. He led them to the edge of the Red Sea and there, what should I do? And the Lord said, go on, Moses, you lead on. Why? Because you're not following the, uh, the millions of the Israelites. You have a mandate to follow God. Hear me today. Men and women of God won't get caught up in the sounds around them of the, of the world. They won't get sounds uh, caught up in the sounds of the murmuring even of the backslidden children of God. Their eyes will be focused. Their ears will be silenced to everything but this one thing. Oh God, I will follow you above everything else. My friends hear me but many times we open our ears. It's not about us. Let me tell you today according to the scripture the Lord is not beyond taking things away from you if they are a hindrance to you. I have known those that have got caught up in their secular job so much that they have forgotten the one who gave that to them and God closed that door. One man came to me one time and he began to say, I don't have time for the things of, of the Lord anymore, the things of the church anymore because my job has gotten so busy and he began to fade away. Hear me today, as sure as I'm standing here two months to the day that he said that he walked in and that company closed down and he had no more of that. Listen, he learned to live as a pauper. Why? Because he chose to do the things of man rather than the things of God hear me God is not beyond taking that from you revival only happens when I have my priorities in order you see it's when I become unwilling I want things my way my schedule I become lukewarm I become stagnant Genuine revival was, was, was going on in this passage of scripture in verse 14 of chapter number 1. What happened? It was this. They were in unity. Why? Because they wanted the hand of God. Genuine revival will be when we gather together in the house of God and say, God, we desire revival greater than we do anything else. Joel chapter number 2 and verse number 13 Listen to what the Bible says in that passage of Scripture. It says, And rend your heart and not your garment. And turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. What does it remind us of? What does it tell us? Hey, listen to me. We can make the, we can make the, uh, the facade, if you will, of, oh, I'm experiencing revival. No, when to stand up, sit down. The Bible says there in verse number 13 of chapter number 2, it is not about, it's not about rending your garments. And that's what they did in that day. They had rend those sackcloth and ashes and walk around so everybody can see them and they had a oh poor pitiful me and they put the hey listen so everybody could see them it is not what everybody sees revival isn't what everybody sees it's what God sees on the inside what does Joel remind us rend your heart rip it allow God to take it out and create you a new creation in Christ Jesus it's not what's on the outside Joel chapter number 2 and Verse number 12, it says, how does that happen? We repent. Joel chapter number 3 and verse number 10, how, how does that happen? Listen to what the word of God says in Joel 3 and 10. Beat your plowshares into swords, your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak, cry, or weak say, I am strong. What is it? It is a reminder that our strength is not in the things of man, but it is in the things of God. What is he saying? Hey, you get rid of the things of this earth. It's battle time. It's battle ready. Today I want you to know that I'd love to be able to stand here and say, hey, everything's going to get better. But boy, if you think that that's true and you believe that lie, you are living in a bubble, 
I'm here today to tell you that listen it is not time for children of God to be status quo it is not time for them to be lukewarm it is time for us as the children of God to raise up and get over ourselves and get in love with the Lord Jesus Christ why because I'm here today to tell you the enemy knows his days are numbered and what God needs from us is for us to be men women boys and girls madly in love with Jesus Christ and I will not back down like the three Shadrach Meshach and Abednego listen I will not back down there's no need for us to take a vote on it we're going to follow the Lord Jesus Christ hear me and that lifestyle what will that do it will mean something to those around you you go to your co-workers and they'll wonder my goodness what happened to them your children that are lost and without Jesus my goodness what happened to them your grandchildren your parents that don't know Jesus your friends your neighbors my goodness what happened to them listen we're able to say I fell madly in love with Jesus Christ I am no longer lukewarm I'm not just play in church I realize the king of kings and the lord of lords is coming and I'm ready I'm ready for the return of Jesus Christ today if we are not man we need to get battle ready no time for immature Christians let me tell you today jealousy in the church of a living God it destroys oh not in our church oh oh I'd love to be able to say that that's not an issue, but boy, listen, somebody gets to do something that somebody else wants to do. Oh, heaven help us. We're going to have to have a, a conference and a meeting of the minds. Why? Listen to me. Jealousy, it destroys churches. Listen, it's not, this church is not a cruise ship. This church has been called to be a battleship. Preacher, I wanted to join a cruise ship. You got on the wrong dock. It may be a speedboat cruise ship, but we're on it. God just gave that one to me too, boy. Thank you, Dalton. We don't have time to play games. Romans 14 and verse 13 tells us, listen, to not be a stumbling block. Let me tell you today, listen to what I'm going to say, tough words, but I want you to hear it. If you're a child of God and there is jealousy, there is pride, there is, there is me in front of God, listen to what I'm about to tell you, and you are praying for people around you to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and there is jealousy, there is arrogance, there is pride in your life, you are not a stepping stone, you have become a stumbling block to them. Didn't figure I'd get much on that one. There's two kingdoms, but they're not the same There's only one king who will never change There's a kingdom of lies, fear and shame And a kingdom of truth, where Jesus reigns Kingdom keepers make a sound The king of kings, he has been crowned We'll stand for truth, we'll stand But they're not 
the same There's only one key who will never change There's a kingdom of lies, fear and shame And a kingdom of truth where Jesus reigns Kingdom keepers make a sound